Hello everyone, this is Mike, KD2KOG, part of the technical support staff at SDR Play. Uh, this is my new residence. I moved from New York to a HOA condo in Wellington, Florida. And one of the major issues with this move is finding a place to put an antenna. And I am located on the ground floor. Uh, as you can see here, there's really no room in the front or on the roof for me to place an antenna. So MFJ was kind enough to send me two loops and I'm going to demonstrate them in this video. Now, most of my videos are how-to videos. This is more of a, uh, I guess this is a guide to antenna restrictions. So let's go over to the garage. I'll show you the antennas that I have. Most of my videos I do in one shot, uh, meaning I don't edit them. I just go with the flow. This one I'm going to have to do in parts. So you will see some editing involved in this video. Now, this is going towards the back. And over here, you'll see the two loops. Now they sent me a MFJ1788, which is a transmitting loop, uh, which is not the focus of this video. The focus of this video is the MFJ1886TR, which is transmit receive. It is brand new. I did open it. The loop is right here. Okay, and we're going to go over to the back, and I'm going to show you where I've been using this loop. As I said, I apologize if this is going to be a, a long video, but I just want to give you guys the whole scenario here. Now, if you look, there's no place for me to mount an antenna. My condo is right over here. Well, it's not that one. It's this one. And here is my back porch slash terrace. And the idea was to, to put the loop either in this corner or in this corner. Now, if I face the back, as you can see, I have no place to run a wire uh, that can't be seen. So this is exactly north. Behind me is exactly south. To the right is exactly east. And to the left is exactly west. So my idea was to put the loop on a small piece of uh, PVC mast or the military mast, the green stuff, and mount it on a rotor. But for the meantime, I've been putting it in this window inside. So let's head inside and I'll show you what I have going on over there. Okay, welcome to my home. And I will show you where the new shack is. So what I did was I took one of the walk-in closets and I converted it into an office. And what I'm using is LMR 400 with a MFJ 915 uh, isolator. I usually take the coax temporarily and run it along the floor. And I mount the loop right here on the sill. And as I said earlier, uh, directly north, east, west and behind me is south and I've gotten pretty good signals uh, using that MFJ loop indoors. I've tried using a long wire, I've tried using uh, multiple uh, I guess they're, they're bonnie whips or uh, mini whips uh, with not great results, not good for me here uh, in this environment. I'm located on the ground floor and as I said I'm in an HOA uh, with massive amount of antenna restrictions. So after I get the OK, it's going to go either on my porch or ideally I like to put it in this corner over here. So let me get everything set up and I'll show you how it performs. OK, we've got everything set up. We have the MFJ uh, 1886 uh, in the window. The power inserter is here, so the main receiver, which is my RSP Duo, is connected. So I'm taking the transceiver, running it into my Cross County Wireless HF pre-selector. And I'm sorry for the light. The HF pre-selector is going directly into the high z port of the RSP Duo. So coming out from the bias T switch here, I'm going to plug in the LMR 400, which I'll do in a moment. And that's going directly 
into this MFJ915, which helps reduce noise for me, going directly into the 1886. And here it is in the window. And the whole point of this video is basically to show you uh, that even with restrictions, there are options. Because I was ready to uh, basically throw in the towel on trying to get an antenna that performed. Uh, as well as my antenna performed in New York. I had a 135 foot uh, off center fed dipole on the second story of my roof that was pointed northeast, southwest, flat topped, and the signals there were phenomenal. Uh, here in Florida, I, I couldn't really say the same thing. So let's get this plugged in and let's fire it up. So bear with me. Hey everybody, it's 7.04 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here in Florida. It's getting very close to gray line. 31 meters should be active. We're going to test this antenna from the bottom of the band and work our way up. So let's launch STR Uno. Now, like I said, I am using the Cross County Wireless HF Pre Selector and I am going to use the built in notch of the RSP Duo on the high Z port. So let's click play. I'm in low IF mode. So I don't have to give myself separation between the tune and the LO. And I'm going to launch a third party app called uh, CSV browser list or user browser list. And it's going to let me, instead of me screaming, it's going to allow me to see what station is actually transmitting on the frequency that I'm listening to. So let's uh, begin. All right, let's enable the notch. Make sure the cross county is uh, not in line. Nothing too spectacular on the lower band. All right, here's a little bit of activity. Let's see what we have. Could be either one of these. Okay, one is from Cuba and the other one is from South America. And the SNR is about there, it peaked at about 32. And it's fluctuating between 20 and 25. Let me just enable the pre selector and see if that helps. Uh, where exactly am I? 5 decimal 025. Alright, and I'm going to tune it. That should be good. And let's take a look at the SNR. Okay, it did help. Let's disable it. And it's going back into the 20 to 30 range. So almost a 5 uh, dB increase in signal to noise. Maybe 6 or 7. Alright, that's uh, Radio Havana, Cuba. Not very far from my location. Alright. Okay, now this station, a uh, few KCs up, is bleeding in, which is Radio Havana, Cuba. Extremely noisy transmission. So, let's put it in lower sideband. Let's open the filter. And we will enable synchronous AM. And that's kind of helping with the offending signal higher up. Okay, what is this? Uh, China Radio International. That's a relay. So that doesn't count as DX. Okay, this is China Radio International being transmitted somewhere in Europe that looks like possibly Italy. So let's lower this and let's take a look. Okay, 
saying this is the transmitting site. Right, it's Albania. Now let's try to increase that. Now also, I forgot to mention, let's mute this. Uh, previous to the loop, I've tried a long wire here, indoors and outdoors. I've tried the uh, active whips, which did absolutely nothing for my location. Uh, I've tried a smaller loop. It worked okay. And as I said earlier, MFJ was kind enough to send me uh, the two loops, one for transmitting and one for receiving. And it it's night and day night and day for me and I have it indoors uh, I can't wait to see the results when it goes uh, outside but let's uh, continue to scan the bands and I want to enable the pre-selector the external uh, cross county wireless HF pre-selector and see if that will increase the SNR here from about a 7 peaking into a 10 see if we can get that a little bit higher so we're at 6.175 all right, and there's the, the peak is here, so I'm going to bring it over to the right. And that's pretty good. And now let's check the SNR. Not bad. Now let's disable it and see what the change is. Well, the peaks are a 10 dB difference, 5 dB difference. All right, let's continue. Maybe we'll get some pirates. I mean, nothing in the upper area of 6. Let's check down here. There should be some vomits or some air traffic control. I know Gander is here, I believe. Uh, Gander, uh, New York, and I believe uh, Dakar, North Africa. 6535 should be Dakar. And let's see if we hear any activity. I'm going to have to zoom out because I want to tune the, the peak of the signal. Well, I'm sorry, I want to get the peak, which is here, this hump, and I want to get it right in here where the tuned frequency is. Nothing happening with the car. All right, let's move up. This is probably Radio Romania International. Let's see. Or it could be Radio Marte. Okay, that's Radio Marte right there. Uh, we don't we don't listen to him. Alright, we're getting into my favorite band, the 31 meter band. Is still not really DX. 9420 should be Voice of Greece. We'll see how they're doing in a second. Not bad. Not bad for an indoor loop. All right, let's let's tune it. Okay, now we have some noise here. This looks like a electrical noise. I can see in the uh, aux SP. Now what I'm going to attempt to do, let's mute this. What I'm going to attempt to do is notch this out. And I'm going to have to increase the bandwidth of the notch, which is one of the functions of uh, SCR Uno. So let's do that. That noise is uh, actually interfering with what we're listening to. So let's notch it out. Let's enable notch one. We're going to click notch one. Pull the shift key. 
and I see that it's moving around a bit. So we did notch it, and when it squiggles, a little bit's going to creep through. So let's increase the bandwidth. Let's say a, a hundred should. 125, 120. That should. Oh, it's going down over here. So let's move it over a hair. Okay, and we're going to put it in synchronous AM, dual sideband, and let's narrow the filter. Okay, we'll take the notch out. Very versatile feature of SDR Uno. Alright, let's continue. Alright, that's Radio Marte. Radio Romania International. Now let's check for parallel broadcast. And what this is going to do is allow me to see if Radio Romania International is transmitting on any other frequency. So I'll enable that, and they are. So we have them. Uh, where are we? We're at 9760. So let's check 9730. Nothing. And 9790. Nothing. Now, if the loop was on a, on a rotor, it would help this... It would actually help me tremendously. It wouldn't help anything. It would just help my, my listening here. Alright, let's continue. This is all uh, noise from my QTH. And I assume once the antenna is outside, a lot of this will uh, decrease. Okay, let's get this more in the center, 13089. And let's enable the Cross County Wireless HF Preselector. Which is the average height up to height one third of the waves. Individual waves may be more than twice the signal. Okay, that's the AGC. Uh, adjusting. So what we'll do is we'll take it a look, we'll take a look at where it is. 39 dB, and we'll re-enable it. Weather. Geovgn D S S N. 37. Okay, we can leave that. Lowercase. And it's a uh, peaking at. 26, dipping into the 11 dB range, the SNR, and let's take the Cross County Wireless out of circuit. Not much of a difference. Actually increase the noise, you can see the lines here when I bring it back, and then when I take it out. Okay, we have some CW signals here, and we have some activity on 20. Let's take a listen. Okay, I can make out the other station having the QSO with this first station. Let's take the cross county out. Let's bring it back in line. Just above the noise. Extremely weak. 
and we lose them in the noise. Uh, let's see what else is happening in the world of HF. I just saw something over here. Ah, that's a CW station. Nothing really happening. I don't know how the bands are at the moment. Uh, we can take a quick peek. I guess this side isn't working. Let's check the check the lower again. station over here. Uh, let's see if we can pick up a UVB 76. I believe it's somewhere out of Russia or Ukraine. And I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to use the pre-selector. Nothing over there. Let's check uh, WWV. Okay, we got a we got a head on ten. All right, let's check fifteen. Nothing spectacular. And let's see if we can get uh, something higher up. Let's see if something's uh, happening on the upper bands. Nothing at all. Let's go back to 31 and then we'll wrap up this video. Actually, what we will do is we'll wrap it up now. We'll do a follow-up. Uh, as I said, the antenna is indoors. It's on the windowsill. Uh, the receiving part of the loop, you know, which are the, the right side and the left side, if you're holding the loop in front of you, is where maximum gain is. The null is in the center. And the way I have it is that I should be getting maximum gain from uh, east and west direction. I have zero nulling ability because the loop is not on a rotor. So we'll do a follow-up video. We'll get the uh, loop mounted outside if possible. If not, it's going to go on the porch and we'll have it placed on a rotor and we'll see what happens and we'll do an A, a to B comparison. I mean, that's what, uh, that's what this is all about. We're going to test different things and see what works best. The antenna, in my opinion, is a success because previous uh, with the other active loop, uh, active whips and long wires and end feds and any wire antenna, it was just it was terrible, absolutely terrible, where I was pretty much, like I said, going to just basically give up on the hobby because this is what I enjoy. This is what I love doing. I love listening to shortwave and I, I love transmitting and talking to people on HF. So uh, next video will be the follow up to this. And if I can somehow implement the transmitting loop uh, using the RSP, we'll do a video with that too. And I also have another loop. I forgot the name. It's a local one that everybody swears by. I believe it's VLP Whiskey 6. 
uh, Victor Lima Papa, I believe. I'm not 100% sure, but we'll put that one through its paces also, all using the RSP Duo. So maybe if I can get some more coax, I'll run one loop into one tuner, and I'll run another loop into another tuner, and we'll check them out real time. Well, 73, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the follow-up.